In this video, we're going to talk about a very useful type of automaton, hidden Markov models. They're very common in many applications, particularly signal processing and speech recognition. So you might have heard the term before, but what are these models? What is the rationale? Imagine you have an automaton like the one on, you have on the left, where you're standing on state zero. Sometimes you could get an A and go into state one. Sometimes you could get a B and go into state two. But you haven't gotten the input yet. You're just standing there waiting for what's going to happen. And you wonder, am I going to get an A? Am I going to get a B? What's going to happen? Obviously, it's impossible to predict the future. But one way to study the future is to study what has happened in the past and assume that the pattern will continue to hold. So maybe we could study previous occurrences of this uh, automaton and try to figure out how often we got an A and how often we got a B. And from this, derive some probability of we getting an A or a B in the future. They're essentially a way of trying to predict the future and try to figure out if I'm standing on state zero, what's going to happen next. This is essentially what Markov models are. They were invented by a Russian mathematician called Andrei Markov, who took a uh, novel by Alexander Pushkin called Eugene Onegin, and then counted. Counted the vowels, counted the consonants. <laughs> so, for example, the first line, Yeshov uh, Vyanuts Neuspiev, he was too young to have blighted by the cold world's corrupt finesse. In the first word, you have the vowel a, and then the second con the second sound is the consonant sh, and then there's a vowel, and then a space, and then a vowel, and then a consonant, and so forth. And so Markov counted every single one of these and tried to figure out, and figured out that maybe with these counts, we could see in general. If we were, if you're standing on any consonant, what's going to happen next? Am I going to get a vowel or am I going to get a consonant? He first just counted the sounds. So Eugene Onegin has about 12,000 consonants and about 7,800 vowels. And from there, if, if, you did, uh, if you landed on any random point of Eugene Onegin, the probability of you landing on a consonant is about 61%. And the probability of you landing on a vowel is about 39%. But let's say you already know a little bit. You're standing on state zero and you know that you're in a vowel. What's going to happen next? Markov also counted uh, how many vowel-vowel combinations there were and how many vowel-consonant combinations there were. So let's say you're standing on a vowel and you want to figure out what's going to happen next about 17% of the times you're going to get another vowel and about 82% of the times you're going to get a consonant. If you know you're standing on a vowel, 17% of the times you're getting a vowel, 82% of the times you're getting a consonant. Let's say you're standing on a consonant. If you're on a consonant, if you already know that, 52% of the times you're getting a vowel and 47% of the times you're getting another consonant. Notice that these are a kind of conditional probability because they're conditioned on the fact that you already know where you're starting. Given a vowel, what's going to happen next? If we put these in an automaton format, you could get a model that uh, looks familiar. If you're standing on a state vowel, 17% of the times you're gonna cycle back into a vowel, 82% of the times so you're gonna go into a consonant. If you're standing on the consonant state, 52% of the times you're going into a vowel, 47% of the times you're going into a consonant. This is called a Markov chain. It describes the probability of uh, going into the next event, um, you know, going into the next state based on the current state. If you're in a consonant, then you know a little bit about what could possibly happen next. This is a Markov chain. And by the way, this is a kind of probabilistic finite state machine. 
it's a finite state because as you can see it has states it has types of transitions it has um, input symbols consonants and vowels it doesn't have empty transitions and it's probabilistic like in the example of the weighted finite state transducers because we have some information about where the states are going to go let's kick it up a notch and look at a hidden Markov model, which is another type of probabilistic finite state machine. In this kind of model, you have two kinds of states, hidden and visible. Let's look at what that means. Let's say someone gathered information in the past about the weather. We know how often days are rainy and how often a day is sunny. But this is because someone gathered the information. Someone counted a bunch of days and then figured out that any day has a probability of 60% or 0 0.6 of being rainy and 0.4 or 40% of being sunny. And once you know it's a rainy day, there's a 70% probability that it'll be rainy on the second day. And there's a 30% probability that it will be sunny on the second day. Let's say you're standing on a sunny day and you already know it's sunny. There's a 60% probability that it's going to be sunny again and a 40% probability that it's going to be rainy on the second day. And again, we know these probabilities because someone observed um, a thousand days in the past and then recorded what they were. This diligent person also recorded data on what people do on rainy and sunny days. So for example, on a rainy day, People walk about 10% of the time, they shop about 40% of the time, and they clean about 50% of the time. On sunny days, people walk around 60% of the time, they shop about 30% of the time, and they clean about 10% of the time. And again, we could derive these probabilities because someone very diligently counted a thousand days, their weather patterns, and people's uh, habits during those days. Once we have this information, we could use it to gather information, uh, we could use it to try to guess information about the weather, the hidden states, given that we only have knowledge about the visible states, what people did on those days. Spoiler alert, this is going to be signal processing, where we, what we can see is the raw signal, and we want to guess some hidden pattern behind the signal. Let's say again that we don't know what the weather is. We don't know what the hidden information is, but we do know what people do. Uh, we have information that people maybe were cleaning for two days in a row, or that they were walking for two days in a row. Given the information on what people are doing, the visible states, can we guess the probability of two things happening in the hidden states? So if we know that people were cleaning two days in a row, can we know what the weather was for those two days? It takes time, but yes, yes, we can. For example, we have two types of, uh, we have four weather permutations. Rainy, 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 sunny, sunny, rainy, and sunny, sunny. If we have two days, and we know that on two, those two days people were cleaning, cleaning, what was the weather on those two days? Let's, let's try the probability of it being rainy, rainy. We know that the probability of any day being rainy is 60%. And we know that when it's rainy, people have a probability of about 50% of cleaning, 0 0.6 times 0 0.5. We also know that the first day is rainy, the probability of the second day being rainy is 70%. And we know that on a rainy day, people have a 50% chance of cleaning, 0 0.7 times 0 0.5. That multiplication is zero, the result is 0 0.105. There's about a 10% probability that if the person was cleaning, cleaning, the weather was rainy, rainy. That means that and this is the largest number of all of them. So the weather was probably rainy, rainy. And if you look at the chart, it makes sense. If what people do most frequently on rainy days is clean, then yeah, it was probably raining outside. 
Let's look at a second permutation. If it's if you know that the person spent two days cleaning, cleaning, what is the probability that the first day was rainy and the second one was sunny? If we go, if we know the probability of a rainy day being sixty percent, and then a rainy day is people clean, it's zero point five. The first day was rainy, but then the second day is sunny. That probability is zero point three of transitioning from a rainy day to a sunny day. And then the probability of cleaning on a sunny day is 0 0.1. All this multiplication is 0 0.009, which is about 10 times smaller than the previous result. So it means that this probability is much less than it being rainy rainy. So it might, the weather might have been rainy sunny, but it's much less likely compared to the probability of the two days being rainy rainy. I'll leave it to you to follow the paths for the other two permutations. So let's practice a little. I want you to take a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen and try to figure out what the weather was like if we know that people were shopping, shopping on two days in a row. Uh, I suggest you pause the video and return to look at the results. Welcome back. The days, the two days were probably rainy, rainy. If you look at the start, and any day being the probability of any day being rainy is sixty percent. If you're, if it's a rainy day, what is the probability that they're going to be shopping? Zero point four. Then, if you're on a rainy day, the probability of the second day being rainy, seventy percent. The probability of people shopping on a rainy day, zero point four. This multiplication is zero point zero six seven percent. Zero point zero six seven. This is the probability, 6.7%, that if people were shopping, shopping, the days were rainy, rainy. These, uh, this probability is at least three times larger than the next one, which is rainy, sunny, and also sunny, sunny. So from a hidden Markov model, if we have partial information, the one in the visible states, we can guess the probability of hidden information the one in the hidden states. Notice that they are hidden when we get a signal, but at some point in the past, we had the complete information, which is how we derived the probabilities to train the model. When are we going to use this? For example, in signal processing. Uh, when we decompose human speech into its component frequencies, we get something called a spectrogram. And we're going to look at spectrograms in much more detail in the week for speech processing. But basically, a spectrogram pulls frequencies apart so that darker areas have more energy and lighter colored areas have less energy. Let's say we train the computer to recognize those energy patterns and to know that in that region, we have the y yeah in yes. So a hidden Markov model is going to get this input and figure out the probability of the signal continuing to be yeah, 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 or eventually transitioning into yes, the vowel for the word yes. So in the training uh, part of the process, you're going to give the computer a signal that has a spectrogram, and you're going to tell it this part of the signal corresponds to a yeah, this part corresponds to an eh, and this part corresponds to the s. The computer is going to figure out the probabilities, and then when the computer gets only the audio signal and the uh, testing phase, the computer is going to try to recognize the patterns and figure out, am I still in a Y? Am I still in a Y? Oh, I've just transitioned into an E. We're going to look at uh, spectrums in much more detail. But this is basically what hidden Markov models are doing. They're, they get a visible input, like a spectrogram, um, a known input, and then they try to guess what the hidden patterns are behind this input. In summary, we have two abstractions here. A Markov chain describes the probability of the next state based on the state I am right now and our knowledge of the, sim of the inputs that we're going to get. A hidden Markov model takes this further and has two types of states, visible states and hidden states. The, these models let you predict hidden states based on the information from the visible states. And these have a lot of applications in um, signal 
an, uh, analysis and speech recognition.